Kitty McRae, a galloping rhyme by Barcroft Henry Boak, read for LibriVox.org by Mark Smith. The western sun, ere he sought his lair, skimmed the treetops, and glancing thence, rested a while on the curling hair of Kitty McRae by the boundary fence. Her eyes looked anxious, her cheeks were pale, for father was two hours late with the mail. Never before had he been so late, and Kitty wondered and wished him back. Leaning athwart the big swing gate that opens out on the bridle track, a tortuous path that sidled down from the single street of a mining town. With her raven curls and her saucy smile, brown eyes that glow with a changeful light, tenderly trembling all the while like a brace of stars on the breast of night, where could you find in the light of day a bonnier lassie than Kitty McRae? Born in the saddle, this girl could ride, like the fearless queen of the silver bow, and nothing that ever was lapped in hide could frighten Kitty McRae, I trow. She would wheel a mob in the hour of need, if the devil himself were in the lead. But now, in the shadows deepening, when the last sunspark had ceased to burn, afar she catches the sullen ring of horse-hoofs swinging around the turn, then painfully down the narrow trail comes Alex McRae with the grey town mail. "'A fever and ague, my girl,' he said. "'Twas all I got on that northern trip. When it left me then I was well-nigh dead, has got me fast in its iron grip, and I'd rather rot in the nearest jail than ride to-night with a grey town mail. At Golden Gully they heard to-day. "'Twas a common topic about the town.' that the Mulligan gang was around this way, so they wouldn't dispatch the gold dust down, and Brown the manager said he thought twere wise to wait for a strong escort. I rode the leaders, the other nags I left with a coach at the traveller's rest. Kitty, my lass, you must take the bags. Postboy, I reckon's about the best. Tis dark, I know, but he'll never fail to take you down with the great town mail." It needed no further voice to urge this dutiful daughter to eager haste. She donned the habit of rough blue serge that hung in folds from her slender waist, and postboy stood by the stockyard rail while she mounted behind the Greytown mail. Dark points, the rest of him iron-gray, boasting no strain of expensive blood, down steepest hill he could pick his way, and never was balked by a winter flood. Strong as a lion, hard as a nail, was the horse that carried the Greytown mail. A nag that really seemed to be fit for a hundred miles at a push, with the old Monaro pedigree by furious rising out of the bush, run in when a colt from a mountain mob by Brian O'Flynn and Dusty Bob. And Postboy's bosom was filled with pride, as he felt the form of his mistress sway, in its easy grace to his swinging stride as he dashed along down the narrow way, no prettier Mercury I'll go bail than Kitty ere carried a government mail. Leaving the edge of O'Connor's hill, they merrily scattered the drops of dew, in the spanning of many a tiny rill, whose bubbling waters were hid from view. In quick step time to the curlew's wail rode Kitty McRae with a grey town mail. Sidling the range by a narrow path where towering mountain ash trees grow, and a slip met more than an icy bath in the tumbling waters that foam below. Through the white fog, filling each silent vale, rode Kitty McRae with a grey town mail. The forest shadows became less dense, they fairly flew down the river fall, as out from the shade of an old brush fence stepped three armed men with a sudden call. Sharp and stern came the well-known hail, Stand, for we want the grey town mail. Postboy swerved with a mighty bound as an outlaw clung to his bridle rein. A hoof-stroke flattened him on the ground with a curse that was half a cry of pain, while Kitty, trembling and rather pale, rode for life and the Greytown mail. To save the bags was her only thought as she bent before the whistle of angry lead that followed the flash and the sharp report, but, "'Oh, you cowards!' was all she said. Fast, as fast as the leaden hail— Kitty rode on with the Greytown mail. Safe? Ah, no, for a tiny stream on Postboy's coat left its crimson mark. 
Still she rode on, but t'was in a dream, through lands where shadows fell drear and dark, like a wounded sea-bird before the gale fled Kitty McRae with a grey-town mail. And ever the crimson life-stream drips, for every hoof-stroke a drop of blood, from feeble fingers the bridle slips, as down the warrigal flat they scud, and just where the red bank workings lie, she reels and falls with a feeble cry. The old horse slackened his racing pace, when he found the saddle his only load, and nervously sniffed at the still pure face that lay upturned in a dusty road, like a gathered rose in the heat of day, she drooped and faded. Kitty McRae. Did postboy stay by the dead girl's side? Not he. Relieved of her featherweight, he woke the echoes with measured stride, galloping up to the postal gate. Blood, dust, and sweat from head to tail, a riderless horse with a grey-town mail. And now a river-oak, drooping, weeps in ceaseless sorrow above the grave on the lush green flat where Kitty sleeps, hushed by the river's lapping wave, that ever tells to the trees the tale of how she rode with a grey town mail. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.